More representatives from the technology company Fujitsu will face questions today about the company's role in the Post Office Horizon IT scandal, which saw hundreds of sub-postmasters falsely accused of theft and fraud. So the business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, has requested urgent talks with Fujitsu, the Japanese firm, over compensation for those affected. Well, we're joined now by Scott Darlington, who's a former sub-postmaster, and solicitor for the victims, David Enright. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Um, Scott, just last week, you were here with other sub-postmasters yeah. as well, and the programme's available on the iPlayer because it looked at all your stories and it was as the inquiry was beginning. Um, and we were getting your views on, you know, what you wanted asked. Um, I think it's really worth, though, for anyone who didn't see that and who doesn't know your story, just briefly, your, your experience with the post office. Uh, well, I had Alder Edge post office since 2005, and everything was fine until the latter half of 2008, when uh, ex uh, large discrepancies started appearing on my system. This carried on until early 2009, when I was suspended, and then I was convicted in 2010 of false accounting and I've suffered the consequences of having a criminal record. And not being able to get a job as a consequence of the years after. Not being able to get a job for three and a half years, yeah. Um, Scott, people will be, uh, you know, a lot of people watching this from the outside have been uh, appalled by what they've heard in the inquiry, from the drama and now listening to the inquiry. Are there things that have happened in that room as part of this inquiry that have been news to you, that, that you, you are on a learning curve too, especially when we're hearing from Fujitsu itself? Um, well, I think it's becoming clear that more and more things are coming out that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, show the behaviour of the post office. Um, once they knew things were going wrong or things weren't right, the, the double down on their behaviour against the postmasters has become clearer and clearer. It's been, uh, it's been awful, and, and Fujitsu uh, in conjunction with them, yeah. I can only imagine from your point of view that doubling down, as you say, or choosing not to hear or see what is evidently happening at the time. I mean, that's very personal for you. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you know that it wasn't you. You know it wasn't your fault. And when st things started to come out and we realised that they did know, uh, the doubling down is just, it's just like a kick in the teeth. And, and they've done it time and time again. Um, quite a few times over the last 10 years. Before we talk um, to David, were you told you were the only one experiencing I problems? I can't actually remember them saying that to me. Right. But I it was a common a phrase people... used, though, yeah. wasn't it? And yeah. it adds to the kind of the isolation and yeah. the fear of actually I did think back. I was the only one, even if they didn't tell me. It was only through doing a little bit of Googling that I found the JFSA and things like that. So. Um, David Enright, um, you're representing victims. Good morning to you. I just think in reaction, in response to the inquiry happening, I know there are still so many people who went through this hell, I think it's fair to say, who still haven't been in touch asking for help. What, what are you seeing, what are you expecting, or what has not materialised? The first thing I'd say is I'm really pleased that Scott Sons, Scott's a client of my firm, Howe & Co. But not just that, uh, we... My partners have known Scott for decades as a friend. And when he was uh, uh, prosecuted in 2010, we were shocked. Uh, we just simply couldn't believe because we know Scott. And um, we walked that path with him as friends. And it took Scott um, 13 years to clear his name. And those 13 years were appalling for him. But there are Scott Darlington's hardworking, decent people in every community in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland who were affected in this way. So I'm delighted Scott's here because he exemplifies that type of hardworking, decent person that people have been just shocked and outraged at their treatment as a result of the, the recent drama on TV. So uh, two questions that uh, Scott and others are asking. First of all, uh, although Scott has finally cleared his name, He's saying, when am I and my family going to be put back in the place we were taken out of? When is our compensation going to be resolved? Because when the post office came knocking at Scott's door uh, back in 2009 and 2010, asking for huge sums of fantasy money created by a dodgy uh, computer system, they didn't say to Scott, oh, you can pay me tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. They wanted their money there and then, and they went for him. They prosecuted him, and even after convicting him, they then went after him in the civil courts to recover these fantasy sums of money. So that's the, uh, Scott's is just a perfect example of the, the world falling in upon a decent person. Secondly, 
and I know this is a fact that Scott is a better life like everybody else. But he's coming on here in part for himself, but also to encourage other victims to come forward because we know that 80% of the wrongfully convicted postmasters have still not come forward to be identified, vindicated and compensated. Why aren't they coming forward? Uh, we think, and I'm sure Scott would back me up with this, that they, they are so traumatized by it. Uh, they have lost uh, all faith uh, in, in our institutions that when, uh, and this is what's happening at the moment, the post office are conducting sort of internal closed door reviews of these convictions. When the post office uh, you know, telephone you and say, hello, it's us again. Uh, we prosecuted you 15 years ago and ruined your life. Um, can we talk to you about uh, you appealing that decision? Most people put the phone down. Um, so it is preposterous that the abuser is in charge of uh, trying to put right the situation of the abused. So we need trusted agencies out there uh, that can uh, reach uh, these individuals, these victims, as I say, in every community in this nation and to give them the confidence to come forward and to be vindicated and to be compensated. Scott, do you want to pick up on that thought? I mean, the idea that the post office is, is phoning those people saying, you know, please come forward. I mean, how would that sit with someone? I mean, you're in a different position now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that David's right, and I think possibly a lot of people might have died uh, because it's been so long. Um, but I imagine that a lot of people don't want to get involved, which uh, I wish they would. Um, it's their time, but uh, I do think David's right that people have such a bad time they don't want to get involved. You know now that Fujitsu, um, it was John Simpson, Simpkins, a team leader, who said <clears throat> he's accepted that the teams knew that the post office was using data that had relevant material missing. Okay, so yeah. and Fujitsu has come out and said it has a moral responsibility to be part of the compensation package. As this inquiry moves on, there are things coming out, aren't there, that, that are more encouraging. And I know it's difficult to kind of put yourself back in that position, but if you'd heard, oh, actually, we know the system had, had bugs, we know there was a problem, my case is stronger, surely that will offer some encouragement? Um, well, it does. I mean, I think that uh, what he was saying about uh, them knowing it from the beginning and they had bugs from the beginning, um, I think we've kind of always suspected that. And, and the worst of the worst is slowly coming out. So the things that we thought probably were true are true. And uh, so obviously it gives you encouragement to know that there's no turning back and, and we're on the right side of things now. Scott, can I ask you about uh, kind of how you are question? Mm -hmm. I mean, David played tribute to you just as a person, as someone that a community trusted and liked. <clears throat> and you've been through such an ordeal. You're now seeing this played out in an inquiry. I suppose it's a really basic question of how are you? What, what, the impact this has had and now where we're at. Well, I feel a lot better about things now because we've been on the wrong side of the post office for so long that now that uh, the inquiry is showing who was to blame, more about who's to blame and, and that it wasn't us at all and the public know that, I feel a lot better about things. Have you been to the inquiry? I have been to the inquiry, yeah. And are you going to carry on going to see...? Oh, well, I'm definitely going to go down when Paula Vannels comes in. Who was the um, head of the post office, yeah. yeah. I've been down two or three occasions. I will be going down more, yeah. Just talk us through that, that moment, Paula Vannels. You want to be there because... I mean, you want to look her in the eye, but just talk us through that moment, because yeah. it, clearly in your head it is important. It is. I'd like to look her in the eye, and I'd, I'd just like to see her on the back foot, like we've been put on for all those years. I'd like to see her squirming in the chair, being asked questions, uncomfortable questions about her role in all this. Has it made a difference that she's given back her CVE? Well, I mean, I think she had to, but it's a, almost a side issue, really, that. I mean, it's only a certificate, so to speak. But, yeah, I think she had to do that anyway. Scott, we appreciate your time with us here on the sofa this no morning. Problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, David Enright, thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you for your time this morning as well. Good to speak to you.